Everybody's so glad we could all be together in the, the house again today as our two congregations. Um, it's, a, it's a great season of Lent as we're uh, making our, our way toward a Holy Week and Easter and being reminded of God's love uh, for us. Um, a lot of moving parts uh, on this day. We're, we're going to worship together. We're going to hear some important announcements. We're going to share communion together. We're going to enjoy some, some food. Uh, but we're also going to uh, get some input and give some input uh, in this ongoing conversation we're having between our congregations about a possible consolidation. Uh, very exciting stuff going on that you're going to get to hear a little bit more about uh, in the service and uh, a chance to uh, offer uh, your thoughts uh, and, and prayers as well. But we're really good to see everybody this morning. So thankful you're here. I know we have some announcements this uh, morning. Right here, Dale. Good yeah. <laughs> morning. Uh, my name is Daniel Schauber, and I've been a member of People's Church for about 25 years. Um, I currently co chair what we call the Justice and Outreach Team, which is um, our group that supports the congregation in social justice advocacy, direct action partnership with like-minded organizations in the St. Croix Valley, like St. Peter's. Um, we have a quarterly mission program, and the current focus is on homelessness, and you'll hear in just a moment from our lead on that, Cindy Parsons. But we also continue this year, in the month of March, to continue to support the Minnesota Food Share Campaign. Um, Peoples, like St. Peter's, has been involved in the Valley Outreach for a very long time, Direct action, volunteers on site, um, through cash contributions and donations, serving also on the board of directors. We've all seen statistics about how dramatically um, the, the demand for food has increased in, in Minnesota over the past few years. At Valley Outreach, the, the amount of visits to the food shelf have actually doubled in the past year alone. So every week, Valley Outreach is serving hundreds of families and with many living on the edge, either for long periods of time or quite unexpectedly. It's surprising to have. This uh, community uh, impact report just landed in our mailbox yesterday. It's a Valley Outreach sort of summary of the programs. I'm sure many of you got them too. Um, and the thing that was compelling to me is that beyond all this the statistics, which are dramatic, is the stories and the photos of the people who they serve. And it's a really, I think, important reminder to me and to all of us that these are real people, these are our real neighbors who are in need. So please give generously all you have, but particularly this month in March. Can we do it? All right. 
I'm Kara Bettine. I've been a member of St. Peter's since birth. And uh, I don't know if anybody's noticed when they come in, but we have a free little pantry at the end of our driveway here. Uh, I think we put that in in the fall of 2021, I'm pretty sure. I was looking through some notes. Um, it is used really frequently. We're refilling it constantly. We do, our church does do like a shares and share grants that we, we give every year, maybe like, I don't know, around $1,500 to some uh, local, usually, well, not really local, to some um, businesses, agencies, to some good causes. And this last year, we, we have been donating, I think it's like 40, around $45 a month towards uh, the pantry. We have two members, well, Chantel and Jessica, have been in charge of volunteer with restocking it. And it is, we're spending, I don't know, probably at least $100 a month. We're bringing in donations of foods. They're spending their own money. We're spending money from the church. So, um, we don't know who's using it, but it's being used. So this month we are we've always done the Valley Outreach. We've always collected in March and donated to Valley Outreach. This month we are tonight collecting it for our pantry. And then any cash collections we take, we are giving that to Valley Outreach because we know they can stretch that a lot further. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm Amy Carson, and I'm also on the Justice and Health Reach team. So we have been uh, focusing on homelessness now for several months. We learned about Habitat for much more about Habitat for Humanity. And this church, a few weeks ago, we had a spokesperson come in and talk to us about Settle, the Sacred Settlement Tiny Homes. Well, next week at our church after worship, we're having Therese Gilbertson come, and she leads up the HOST team. HOST stands for Homeless Outreach Service Team. So it's at Washington County. They do have front door hours, but also what this team does is go out. They go out to the rest stops and parking lots where there are a number of people living in their cars through the winter, all year round. There are people that work, but they can't find house. And so come and hear more about what the host is doing and more about homelessness in our county because it really does exist. <laughs> and, um, yes. if, if that's an area of passion for you, um, in the midweek news of People's Congregational Church, um, there's knowledge that there's a collection of $25 gift um, gas cards. So if there's a local area gas station that you would like to pick up a $25 gift card, that's how that organization can receive um, gifts from any of us next week, so it would be in the form of bringing a gas card with you. Uh, great stuff. Um, on this uh, second Sunday of Lent, one of the, the big uh, reminders as we celebrate communion is, is Christ's love for us and in us, but of course as the body of Christ, the uh, main purpose of that is so that Christ's love can go out through us, and we hear these great opportunities for that. It's, it's fantastic. So thank uh, you all for Other announcements, yeah, Gina? Yeah. Um, I talked to Phil Gallup. She wanted everyone to know we're reading the Chief Contrary because a number of residents in her building have come down with COVID. Oh. So they are not able to leave the building until everyone is better. But she's not sick yet. She's not. No, she said she was tested and she's good. But, right. um, and then also, if you got our flower list for most florals or Easter flowers, and there's a sign up sheet, so if people want to sign up, um, to receive, to, get, to give, to buy flowers for most for our beautiful Easter um, display on the altar for Easter. Please do just sign up, or, or you can also just bring your own flowers if you want. Good. Yes, anything else this morning? <laughs> Surely there's one more announcement. <laughs> Somewhere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Well, let us uh, come together as the, the people of God to uh, worship God. I invite you to stand if you're able, and we will um, read responsibly this psalm uh, of ascent, designed for uh, this second Sunday of Lent. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where.
will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. The Lord keeps his Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your life now. Let us uh, sing to the Lord unto the hills we lift our longing eyes, number 466. Respect. 
in ourselves and in the people around us. And we can help know, know our own dignity when others share it with us. So what we want to do is pay attention to each other and, and quite, quite briefly share what food we decided to bring. So if you would show me my, my dignity by showing your, your eyes and your ears to me, then I know, then I know that you care about what I have to share. I brought chicken and orzo with lemon soup because this helps me feel healthier, especially when I'm starting to have a head cold. And I thought someone will need that. So who would like to share which item they brought? Yeah, what did you bring, Jonah? Corn and tuna fish. Corn and tuna fish. Is there something you like about them? No. Cheerios taste really good. I wonder if they start you heart help you start your day sometimes, maybe. And Wilkie, what did you bring? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, noodles. Wonderful. Many people in many cultures use noodles to make a variety of tastes of food. So that's wonderful. Oh my goodness. And Briar, what did you bring? Um, Not quite sure. <laughs> they look like they look like beans to me. Do you think? Okay, let's put it in the basket. Beans are another thing like noodles that many different people use and make many different tastes out of the meals they make with these. So I'm hoping that Kara can, can help us take these to the, um, the, little, the little free pantry outside, hopefully ask after worship and, and hopefully be part of taking these to the place they get stored um, for other people to eat. Okay? Um, thank you so much for providing something that you want other people to have for food. And thanks for sharing dignity by listening to one another, okay? Now, something very fun, and Lisa will stand where she is. She's available to, um, to play in another space. She brought some interesting activities with her today. So you can go with Lisa if you'd like, or you can stay in worship with us, okay? All right, so let's return either to our families in the pews or to go with Lisa if you'd like to play. She'll be waiting out there in case, in case you decide to join her. And now we're going to hear from our scriptures. Good morning. Our scripture reading for today comes from the Gospel of John, the third chapter, beginning at verse 1. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, But how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. 
If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe it if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Beloved community, as we reflect on that scripture reading this morning, may we settle into this sacred space and time for wondering. The reading from the Gospel of John invites us to wonder how trusting that we are both born of the Spirit and eternal by design can have embodied impact in our individual lives, in the communal life of each one of these congregations, and in a potential shared communal life as one congregation. Let us pray. Oh God, keep our spirits and every one of our senses open to living in a way of curiosity like Nicodemus. And keep our spirits and every one of our senses open to sharing with others again and again what our spirit tells us the way of Jesus. And as we wonder together this morning, grant us serenity to accept the things that are not within our power to change, the courage to change things that we can, and the wisdom to discern the one from the other. wonder together this morning, what lessons might the conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus hold for us today? When Nicodemus found Jesus in the night and confessed his awe and conviction that Jesus must have come from the power of God to be able to offer such signs and wonders, Jesus engaged with Nicodemus about what it meant that he had come from God. Jesus said to the awestruck Nicodemus, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. I think Jesus was emphasizing for Nicodemus that he wouldn't be able to participate in the realization of God's kingdom, a beloved community rooted in love and justice unless he stayed connected to the love of God as his source and his womb. Nicodemus answered, as we heard, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? And we heard Jesus' reply, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. Let's remember the substance of the kingdom of God that Jesus embodied. Jesus consistently encouraged his followers to love God with their whole selves heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love their neighbors as well as loving themselves. 
We can embody this commandment from God as revealed through Jesus. I have come to believe that one of the most powerful ways we can embody the balance of loving God, self, and neighbor is by embracing the reality that God's imprint, a birthmark from the Spirit, is present in every other person with whom our paths intersect. Today is momentous in the life of these two congregations, St. Peter's United Church of Christ and People's Congregational Church, because we have an opportunity to be truly present with each other at this intersecting moment, which will never repeat itself. Our joint task force will invite us to wonder together, sharing insights, questions about the possibility of weaving two congregations together to become one. Later in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verses 20 to 21, Jesus prays for the future communities who might find unity through his message and lived example of embodied love. Jesus prays, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all may be one, as you, Abba God, and I are one. I pray that they may be one in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. The world, and particularly the St. Croix Valley, has needed the way that St. Peter's UCC has embodied Jesus, born of the Spirit message, across many years. And the world and the St. Croix Valley has needed the way that People's Congregational Church has embodied Jesus, born of the Spirit message, across many years. And what if, what gifts of love and justice and grace could unfold if these two congregations were to unify as one, a direct answer to Jesus' prayer, and together pursue an even stronger, more vibrant path from the present to the future. A moment ago, I shared a conviction I have developed that one of the most powerful ways we can embody the balance of loving God, self, and neighbor is by embracing the reality that God's imprint, a birthmark from the Spirit, is present in every other person with whom each of our paths intersects. A few minutes ago, I spoke with our young people about dignity, being worthy of honor and respect. We will love one another well today by opening our senses Seeking closely, listening carefully, holding an open body posture. As we share responses to these three questions from our joint church task force, seen by many of you over email and to be repeated again, but shared in this moment of meditation. As it pertains to the possibility of a new congregation, what are the possibilities that excite you about a potential consolidation? What concerns, scares, or saddens you about a potential consolidation? And what do you need to know to support a consolidation? Because we believe that we are each born of the Spirit, we will approach this conversation with love in the form of kindness. Our conviction that we each bear a birthmark of the Spirit can embody itself most effectively today through kindness. Love that acts from a place of seeing the other and wanting and working to know the other. One of my favorite heroes is Mr. Fred Rogers. He consistently taught and continues to teach beyond his death 
how to live as people born of the Spirit. In the late 1980s, I would come home midday from kindergarten, plant myself in front of the four-channel TV, and drink in the Holy Spirit as embodied by Mr. Fred Rogers. Now my children access his same spirit and embodied voice and love through their iPad. If you have never seen the video of Fred Rogers making an argument in front of a congressional committee to fund the show Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, I encourage you to search for it on the internet. It is very moving. Fred Rogers was a Presbyterian minister who was bullied as a child in school and chose to transform that pain he had experienced through his belief that love and kindness were possible and powerful. Hear these words of encouragement for us today from Mr. Rogers about being born of the Spirit. I believe that appreciation is a holy thing, that when we look for what's best in a person we happen to be with at the moment, we are doing what God does all the time. So in loving and appreciating our people, <coughs> we are participating in something sacred. I'll read that again. I believe that appreciation is a holy thing. That when we look for what's best in a person we happen to be with at the moment, we're doing what God does all the time. So in loving and appreciating our neighbor, we're participating in something sacred. And this, friends, is salvation. Salvation happens over and over again. Are you saved? It depends on whether you are engaged in love and justice and kindness day by day with others. I'll close with the final verses of our reading as they come to us through the ecumenical translation called the Inclusive Bible. God so loved the world as to give the only begotten one, that whoever believes may not die but have eternal life. God sent the only begotten into the world not to condemn the world, but that through the only begotten the world might be saved. Let's be agents of eternal life. Let's be agents of the world being saved restored to God through our acts of kindness. As we come forward to participate together in Holy Communion, side by side, may we be open with our senses to each other's dignity, to our common birthmark from the Holy Spirit. Let us love one another, because love is counting on us. Amen. Amen. Next hymn that we will sing together is number 605. I invite you to stand in your
prayer for that uh, word from this familiar passage, bringing into life. I love the image of the birthmark. Mm. I've heard that one before. That was awesome. I actually I resonate with it because I have a birthmark right here. And uh, when I was a kid, it, it sort of robbed all the pigment out of my hair. So even you know when I had dark hair back in the day, uh, I would have this gray like splotch coming out. And people are like, what's going on? I was like, oh, I've got this birthmark. I was super proud of it because, you know, I looked dignified at age 12. I I love this uh, uh, image now that, you know, my whole face is turning gray. That, yeah, that that God has has marked us in indelible ways. And even when we uh, press back against that, there is this relentlessness to God's grace that that pushes into us and um, uh, insists in a way. Uh, through God's Spirit, that, yeah, we will live these lives that, that He's called us to. Because even in our failures, you know, we get to show what forgiveness is like, and what, you know, repentance is like, and what resurrection looks like, and that's just what's so strong about uh, our faith. I want to come to a, a time of, of prayer, and um, this morning, given that we're, we're doing so many things, I'm going to lead us, but I am going to put some space in, in prayer for you to uh, perhaps offer up to God things on your own uh, heart and mind in silence. And then I will uh, segue from uh, this time of joy and concern into a, a time of confession as we prepare our, our hearts together to uh, partake of this uh, communion meal that is ours as the people of God. So let us pray together. Most gracious Lord, we do uh, come before you as your people, united by your spirit, by our profession of belief in your love for this world, for our conviction that you came to save this world in ways that we're allowed to participate in, that your uh, body and and blood shed for us have become in us uh, your body and blood uh, pulsing through us that that we might love as you have loved us. As Moses did raise the serpent in the desert as a sign of healing, we know we live in a world in desperate need of healing. So we come before you, Lord, with our our hearts uh, full, and take a moment now just to, uh, to offer to you those people, those places, those circumstances that need your healing touch. The Lord, your word teaches us that love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, and need that your love never fails. And so we trust, O oh God, in your love for this world. And while we don't always see the, the evidence we want to see as fast as we want to see it, we, we know that your grace is relentless and that your promise is for all things made new. And so we rejoice, O oh God, in the, the glimpses we get of that eternity now. We take another moment of silence just to give you thanks for those places in our life where beauty and love and grace are so evident. Thank you, O Lord, for uh, the, the deep lesson we, we learn as, as we live, that uh, the key to, to happiness is, is not having what we want as much as wanting what we have, and how you teach us over and over and over that 
by following you in the way of the cross, you indeed will supply everything we need. You know those things we didn't realize we needed, and especially those things we need but we didn't want. We know, Lord, that uh, despite your love for us, we, we struggle uh, to believe. We struggle to live out our callings. We struggle to, to sustain the, the faith that does give us life and joy. We come to the communion table each month for a refilling, a reminder, a recalling of our purpose in this life as your people. And so help us as we prepare our hearts to confess those places where we need love to, to impose itself on the strong. Hear us in a moment of silence as we offer those, those spaces to you. And then hear us as we Now praying together is printed in your bulletin. Most merciful God, we bless and praise you. May God in peace. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not known our neighbor or our heart. We have not known our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and do not believe in fact. For the sake of your Son Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and every one, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. For many years as a, a pastor, I'm sure I've said this before, but we would take the opportunity of, of confession and forgiveness during communion to make sure that we not only made our peace with God, but made our peace with each other. Um, the Bible's uh Pretty clear that you shouldn't come and partake of communion if you haven't, you know, uh, made your peace. And so it was not uncommon that we would uh, see uh, couples or friends or others, um, you know, moving from the two ends of the sanctuary where they were seated because they were mad at each other, uh, to the middle, where they would uh, reconcile. And of course, there was always a long line of people wanting to talk to me. Um, <laughs> but I think the, the beauty in this is that. We, we recognize that God's forgiveness is not just ours, but ours to, to make sure that it, that it extends to others. And so uh, I do want to invite you to, to stand and greet one another with the peace. And if by chance there's something you can make square with somebody, take some time to do it right now. Let's stand and greet one another with the peace. Oh, yeah. Oh, Um, and I never figured out why this was, but 
at least memorable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but chances are, I mean, depending on how you've grown up and how you've experienced uh, this uh, uh, time and the central time in our, our working together, uh, you've done different things. You perhaps have walked forward uh, and come to an altar, uh, an altar reminding us of God's sacrificial love for us. Or perhaps you've been in traditions, uh, congregational traditions, where the emphasis is on the table, where we gather as followers of Christ around the table and, and share uh, this meal together. I learned just last Sunday that here at St. Peter's, uh, there's this sort of mashup way that combines both of those images that I didn't know. Um, I'm finding out there's a lot of things I didn't know. Um, but there's one thing I didn't know that uh, the way communion used to be practiced here, and we're going to uh, resurrect it. Uh, today is a sort of a combination of, of coming uh, in worship to Christ, um, our Passover, uh, his sacrificial love for us uh, to the altar, but also uh, receiving from Christ um, his uh, love for us, uh, this bread and this cup, um, as, uh, as if we were around the table uh, as Jesus first uh, began this, this meal uh, with his own disciples. So what's going to happen? I'm going to uh, uh, say a prayer. I'm going to introduce the elements to you. And then I'm going to invite you to come up uh, four or five at a time, uh, four or five on this side, four or five on that side. And I uh, ask you just to stand or kneel if you'd like. And uh, Pastor Claire will bring the, the bread by. And then I'm just going to ask you to, to hold it. And then when uh, she invites you to partake it together, uh, a symbol of both our Individual uh, partaking of, of Christ's love with the fact that we're also united uh, and in community. And then I'll follow her in the same way with uh, the cup, and we'll, we'll do it each side, a side over here, a side over there. And once uh, you are, are finished, well, we're going to ask you to return to your seats by the edges, and then once you see um, folks leave, another four or five come up, four or five to this side, four or five to that side. This is a lot of choreography. Are you up for it? And there's a lot of grace in the room, so if you're like, what do I do? Just do something. <laughs> if you find that coming up is, is, is difficult, we'll be glad to uh, make sure and come to you that we all might uh, partake of this uh, grace for us. You have something you want to say? Yeah, on the tip of my tongue, knowing that we have friends with us, many friends via the live stream or, or watching and participating later, um, just welcome you also to have with you elements to eat and drink. And of course, language is different in all of our heritages that any of us may come from, mine being Wisconsin Synod Lutheran. So um, that, that um, this, this body of Christ or this bread of life and this, this blood of Christ or cup of salvation and blessing, please join us wherever you are. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we uh, come to you uh, in this sacred space uh, acknowledging um, our need, but also your grace, your love that, that we uh, are lavished with from you, but that we also get, have the joy of lavishing upon one another. And so fill us, uh, sustain us, uh, help us uh, in this time as we partake. To be reminded of all that you are for us, this birthmark that we are marked with because of your love. And fill us that we might uh, go from this place to serve you and love you and all that we do. It is in your name that we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took the cup, and he blessed it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. The Apostle Paul reminds us that whenever we eat this bread, whenever we 
drink from this cup, we proclaim Christ's death until he comes again. Christ, our Passover, was sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Please come for my